Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever cared for someone? Cared for another person? I hope so. And when I say cared for, I don't just mean cared for emotionally, but cared for physically, cared for financially. I'm not just asking, have you ever loved someone, but have you ever been responsible for someone, in charge of another person, taken care of them, perhaps when they were unable to take care of themselves? Maybe you've cared for a uh, child in this way, or for a parent, or a spouse, a sibling, a friend. If you have ever taken care of someone, then you know that it is exhausting. It can be joyful, wonderful, but it is also certainly exhausting. That's why I hear that one of the joys of being a grandparent is that you get to take the kids and then you get to give them back. That's what I've heard, right? I'm looking forward to that day. Uh, there was an article in the New York Post a couple of weeks ago with the headline, Americans spend nearly 1,500 hours feeling tired every year. 1,500 hours, about between a quarter and a third of our waking life is spent feeling tired, which sounds roughly right to me. And I think there are many different reasons for this. You know, one I think is our addiction to screens, which often keep us up much later than is good for us. Or perhaps it's the stress created by the, the 24-hour news cycle in an election year. I hear there used to be a time when you would only watch the news for like half an hour at night and read the paper in the morning. Can you imagine what that would be like? <laughs> it may be amazing. But I also wonder, maybe it's because we care about other people, because we're caring for them, because were parents caring for small children, or were adult children caring for aging parents, or were caring for sick spouses or hurting friends? Maybe we're tired because we're, we're doing everything we can to provide for those we love, to make a home, to make ends meet, to pay for college, to maintain stability, to create joy. Uh, the wonderful former bishop of South Carolina, a man named uh, Ed Salmon, who was also the dean of DJ's uh, seminary for a time, he used to say that all loving relationships are by their very nature anxiety-producing. To love someone, to care for them, is to worry about them. You know, he used to say no one gets stressed out or exhausted by their relationship with the checkout person at the grocery store, but when it comes to your kids your siblings, your parents, your spouse, your friends. It's a different story, isn't it? I've talked before about one of my favorite movies, um, 1989 Parenthood, with Steve Martin, Keanu Reeves, Diane Weist, uh, River Phoenix, when his name was Joaquin Phoenix, he changed it at one point. No, Joaquin Phoenix, when his name was Leaf Phoenix, I'm sorry, River passed away. Anyway, in this movie, Parenthood, 1989, there's a scene in which Steve Martin is talking to his father, and they're talking about Steve Martin's brother, Larry, his adult brother, Larry, who's gotten himself into some very significant financial trouble and has come to his father asking for help, and his father is wondering what to do. And so he's talking to Steve Martin, his son, Larry's brother, about what he should do, and he's talking about the exhaustion of parenting. Here's what he says to Steve Martin. You know, when you were two years old, we thought you had polio. Did you know about that? For a week, we didn't know. I hated you for that. I did. I hated having to go through that. The caring, the worrying, the pain. It's not for me. And you know, it's not like all that ends when you're 18 or 21 or 41 or 61, it never 
never ends. It's like your Aunt Edna's backside. It goes on forever, and it's just as frightening. I may have cleaned that up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> there is no end zone. You never cross the goal line, never spike the ball and do your touchdown dance. Never. I'm 64. Larry is 27. And he's still my son. Like Kevin is your son. You think I want him to get hurt? He's my son. Maybe the reason we're tired and anxious is because we care. We care about and for other people. So in chapter 6 of Mark's gospel, which is to where today's gospel reading comes from, uh, Jesus and His disciples are doing a lot of caring. They're preaching, they're teaching, they're healing, they're traveling, they're casting out demons, they're feeding thousands and thousands of people from a few loaves and fish. And how are they feeling? Well, what does the Scripture for today say? The apostles gathered around Jesus and told Him all that they had done and taught, and Jesus said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. The disciples are exhausted. They're worn out. They're tired and hungry, and so Jesus says, let's get out of here. Let's take a little break. Let's take a little vacation. Let's rest for a while. Take a nap. Get something to eat. Recharge. So they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Sounds great. What happens next? Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, He saw a great crowd. Wonderful. <laughs> And He had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and He began to teach them many things. So they try to get away, but the crowds follow. And what does Jesus do? Does He tell them to get lost, find somebody else to help Him out? He needs a break? No. He has compassion for them, and He goes on preaching and teaching and healing. Now, the disciples, they do tap out, but Jesus keeps on going. One of the things I want to say today, and what I think the Scripture is saying, is that the life of love, a loving life, is very often an exhausting life. It's also a joyful life. It's a meaningful life. It's a wonderful life to uh, mention another film in which there's a character who's fairly stressed out because he's trying to take care of people. You guys remember It's a Wonderful Life? But it's also an exhausting life. You know, if you want to be well-rested all the time, if you never want to be anxious about anything, just don't care about anybody. <laughs> don't get into a loving relationship with anybody. You know, don't approach anyone that you might have to care about or you might possibly have to be responsible for. To love other people, to care for other people, it is exhausting. It was exhausting for the disciples, it was exhausting for Steve Martin's father, and it's exhausting for us. But we do not do it alone. We're not alone. One of the things I love about our church, about Holy Trinity, is the way that we serve each other, the way that we care for each other and our community. Do you know that we have over 200 people who volunteer in some capacity in this church? Many of them more than one capacity, over 200 people. This is a caring, serving community, and that's why I think love flourishes here, why relationships flourish here. You know, caring may be exhausting, but it is what binds us together with each other and with our Lord. Because as we care, as we serve, as we love, Jesus does it all with us. 
Jesus invited his disciples to care for others with him, and he invites us to do the same, invites us into his work. And as we do that work, we must always remember that Jesus loves and cares for us and for those we serve more than we can possibly imagine. We must remember that He is on our side and on the side of those we care about. And even when we reach the end of our resources like those disciples did, when they need to say, we're, we're done, we're over, Jesus never gets tired, at least now. In His earthly body He did, but now He's ascended. Now He never gets tired, He never stops. He always provides, always loves, always shows up, always comes through. Jesus cares about us, cares about the people we serve uh, every day, every moment of our lives. He's with us until the very end of the age. What I would love to be able to say to you this morning and to say to myself is that at some point, uh, life will stop being so exhausting. <laughs> but my hunch is that's not true. <laughs> Maybe those of you who are a little bit older than me can, can tell me if that's true. I will say, someone after the 8 a.m. said, you know, RJ, one of the amazing things about getting older is that you see more and more all the ways that Jesus does actually show up, all the ways that He provides, all the ways that He is present. You know, I think as long as we have people that we care about, that we care for in this broken and often confusing world, we're often going to find ourselves a little bit tired and a little bit anxious. But we're not alone, and it's not forever. Jesus is with us. He cares for us, cares for those we love, and someday He will give us rest. So as I wrap up, um, I want to read again that perhaps greatest of all psalms that we read together today, Psalm 23, certainly the most famous, the psalm of David, a man who was no stranger to exhaustion and anxiety. But of course, I'm going to read it in the King James Version because that's way better. So let's hear this again and remember that as David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.